another day. Good afternoon and welcome everybody to, well, it's actually morning. I'm always used to saying good afternoon with the radio show. Um, good morning and welcome to Connecting Caregivers Presents Candid Conversation. And uh, today I have a good friend on here with me, Rick and Corvier. And Hello. Rick is, hi Rick. <laughs> hi Linda, Rick, nice to see you again. It's great to see you. And um, Rick is an author um, of six books over the last 12 years. My favorite being The Traveler's Bestseller. But there's a whole list of others. Uh, Reckless Ambition, In Your Dreams, When I'm Gone, The Gift. Uh, the Wrong Side of the Glass, I think that's my favorite second one. And now he has a new right. book coming out before we know it, Bobby's Cabin. So right. welcome, Rick. Thank you. So... I'm sure you've heard it before because I know I hear it all the time. How do you write a book? Because I think everybody's got a book. a book in them. They do. I hear that all the time. Oh, I, I've always wanted to write a book or, or I started a book and I, I just don't know what to do with it. But the, the key thing is just to start. First of all, find something that you're passionate about and then give yourself, give yourself time to start. And people always ask me, well, where do you start? Start anywhere. Start in the middle of the story if you want. Just start writing. And, and don't stop. And uh, there's a term I've heard about called uh, "bitch okay," which is an uh, acronym for butt in chair, hands on keyboard. Just down yes. there, type it away. Get the ideas out of your head and onto paper. Don't worry about spelling it right at this time. Don't worry about putting it in order. Just get your thoughts down. And uh, a lot of times, I'll even go for a walk and you know record on my phone. Gosh, I've been doing this so long. I used to have you know a handheld recorder. And uh, you just walk in. I like to go through the woods, walking through the woods, telling my story where I know nobody else can hear me except yeah. the animal and, uh, and just get it started. But, and there's uh, something about terrible. being in nature that just is inspiring. Oh, yeah. Well, in fact, you should recognize one of the times while I was out there walking around, I accidentally stumbled upon like five deer that were laying in the grass. They must have been frozen, hoping I wouldn't notice them. And all of a sudden there was a crazy trampling of of the deer running all around looking for a place to hide. And you may have noticed that's in one of the books. That's, a, yeah. that's true from when I was writing the book. I was startled and it made its way into the book. And, and, uh, and, and but, everybody, but everybody might not use a keyboard either. Some people just want to scribble on paper. True. I did a lot whenever, of that in my last Whenever. Right. But I think people think when you finish, like me, my first book, Reckless Ambition, I heard somebody say it truly was a reckless ambition. Because all I thought was, all right, I got to the end. All right, here it is. Come and get it. You know, I didn't know what to do. And I think that's where so many people have books or they're afraid to get to the end or they if, they if they do get to the end, what do I do now? And I'll be glad to help out anybody that wants to, to have ideas. There's so many, so many places to go for help. All you have to do is, is know, first of all, that you, you need an editor. I, I got yes, a, you need need an a good editor. one. Because I tell you, I hate when I read a book and I see something misspelled or, or repeated or whatever. And what that happens, can happen so easily. It does. My first book, I had a crappy editor. And I'll, I'll never forget, instead of people coming back wanting to talk to me about the story, they wanted to tell me about page 77 where you know it says, and, and. Or you, know, you said, of, instead of, off. And little things like that. So people, people find errors in it. It's just human nature, but as they're, they're reading your book, they see one, it's, oh, I, I caught an error. You see two, it's, oh, another error. By the third one, you know, good luck getting them to open up the next chapter. Once that book gets closed, sometimes it's not opened again. And it's tough to get somebody to read your book beginning to end. Yeah. And, and you know what the thing is, too? I think um, you want to come across as a professional. If you're writing a book and you right. want to share it with the world, you need to be Correct. professional about it. And I, there's so many different opportunities today with publishing um, more than ever before and all the information on the Internet. So let's talk about publishing a little bit. Okay. There are so many different ways. I mean, you know, indie authors, you can get people any more to, to convert it to the right, the right layout. And, and, of course, they do their final check as well, and, and they'll get it online for you to do ebooks. Of course, I found out, I thought, the wave of the future, ebooks. And as soon as I got it on an ebook, everybody said, you know, geez, I just love the smell and the feel of a book. I want to be able to turn the pages and so then be on paperback. 
and of course then then you have people say, well, I like I like Audible. So next thing you know, you, you you've got it on every different genre, every different you know. I still take you. Yeah, and and you never know you which you, which ones are going to sell best. It's funny, I found a really good uh, narrator. Uh, I don't know. Did you read the Traveler or did you listen to it on Audible? I read it. I'm I'm really not an Audible girl yet. Oh my gosh, I have it. Adam Watson. He just does such a great job. There's 22 characters in that book, and and he brings them to life. And he reads it the way I would read it, except with a better voice. And uh, just I don't. I'm I'm an Audible fan. I have everything I do while I'm while I'm driving. It uh, just keeps me thinking more about the book than trying to get ahead of that guy who's driving too slow. And it just relaxes yeah. me. I love the Audibles while I'm driving. Well, actually, my first book, Good Night and God Bless, w was recorded on CD. You bought, you purchased the. Right. It was no yeah. Audible. Right. And, and I remember at the time it was, do I read it myself or do I have someone else read it? And I checked out a couple different people, but that particular book was written about my mother. Right. And it was our story. So I felt it really needed to come with my voice, and people kind of appreciated that, especially the people that already knew me. Mm -hmm. So, yep, I did my first book, Reckless Ambition, I, I read it myself, and when I listened back to it, I realized I had a cold, and, it, and it's like, oh, it's kind of like a pound, and I said, nah, from now on, I'm going to get somebody else to do it. You know, it's, yeah. you're tough on yourself, you know, toughest on yeah. yourself. Yeah. So, do you make it? A, so, I know you're just in the in the last stage of your latest book, is that the editor now, right? Yeah, and that, that's something I, I kind of left off. When, when you just finish the book, I mean, obviously you want to try your best to, to have your spelling correct and your book at least in the order of the sequences that it happens. But then let a friend, somebody that you trust, to, to be honest with you, that'll say, not, not so good, or, or you, you missed an, an area, or I really like it, whatever it is honest. And, I have I have a friend for that, and and you know her, Ruba. Yeah. Ruba from Jordan. She's just a she's very intelligent woman. Her second language or third, for all I know, is English, and she's way more eloquent than I am with my only language. And uh, I recently got one back, and she just said, "Spelling is unacceptable." <laughs> 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 yes, dear. But uh, then, uh, so so there's somebody who I I realize that I really have to you know, look through it to get things just right, and. Uh, and at that stage, I'm not so much worried about the spelling. It's really about just story at that point. Yeah. But then I have yeah. somebody else who, who will read it and, and really, you know. This right. I had a lot of that. problems with, with current tense and past tense. Right. That right. I needed Same. a lot of help. And, and every now and then even uh, changing who who is saying it instead of the female procurer, it's now a different perspective. And it, so there's just so many different things that a good editor will do for you. They're not all about, they're not about spell check and saying, good job. I can get my mom to do that. You know, tell me, yeah. oh, it's a wonderful book, Rick. So of you, course. Of course. Yeah. Well, the other day when we were, when you and I were speaking, I remember when um, my editor sent me back my first report <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I'm printing out that that's what, that's what we did then. I'm printing it out, and there's red marks all over it, and on my heart, you know, my heart. Right. And so I had a glass of wine, and then I called her, and I said, you know, this is a little tough seeing all these red marks here. And she said to me, Linda, the girl is beautiful. I'm just bringing her to the salon to to spruce her up. Yes. And I was like, well, you know how to work with me. Yeah. I'd say John would send me things back like uh, – you need another chapter between three and four, and get rid of this. You know, get rid of this entire paragraph, and change chapter three. It needs to be chapter one, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. So a rewrite, pretty much. That's hard. But you know, you're right. It's like a, it's like getting back that science test, you know, D minus that you actually studied for. And but uh, but you know, wholeheartedly, you're right. Have the glass of wine, and later on you read it and you go, oh, I'm really glad that he had me do that. Oh yes, because. Absolutely. I remember when it came back, there was a, a particular sentence or whatever. Just something wasn't flowing with it right. And she changed it. And I was like, yes. That's, that's it. it. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. Or so often you could say, you, you think it makes perfect sense to you when someone else reads it, this question. That, Wait a minute. Did, I'm not sure what you meant right there. And so it's really important to, to smooth out, even if it's just one or two of those sentences within the book. 
that you don't realize isn't smooth enough and doesn't come across the way in your head you think it's just perfect. But yeah. you need other yeah. people's opinions first. And uh, have, you ever read someone a, else, have you ever read someone else's book and you sometimes you feel like you're stuttering almost? Right. And, and that's what I try. If somebody else, I'd like to have people read it, it out loud, my, my book. And obviously, I don't sit there and listen to the whole thing reading it. But, but if there's a tough paragraph, I say, let me hear you read that to me. And when they do it, then they, they struggle and stumble until they get it right then. Oh, they'll back up a little bit and then they'll reread it smooth. That tells me I need to redo that sentence in a way that is smoother. Yeah. And, and I'm an impatient yeah. person. I like immediate. I, I tend to rush things. Let's get this going. Let's get it going. Uh, you know, some people have to get things so perfect that they, they never get to the end. They never yeah. get it published. They yeah. get it finished. Yeah, but, yeah that's you know, bad. It's a, it's a fine line. Fine line between rushing it through and getting everything perfect. And you know what? I think everybody has a book in them. Everybody would like to say, I have a book published. And you can do it today. And it doesn't have to be for the whole world. It could just be for your family if you choose, your class Agreed. or whatever it is. Um, because fact, you know, not too many of us are going to get on the New York Times bestseller list. I know you will one day, but I don't think I will. <laughs> I'm sure hoping. But one thing yeah. I did learn is that you, you don't write the book for everybody. If you write a book for everybody, it's for nobody. You write the book that's in you, the one that brings out the passion, the one that makes you say things that are, are a little too private to really share, but you put them in a book anyway. And, and you, you write it for those for those few people that really can relate to you or maybe going through the same thing or, or that one person who's life that you change because they read your book. And, uh, or or yeah. your book. Your book, for me, changed the way I treat my mother and father. I mean, my father recently passed, but it changed the way I treat them. So you write, you write your book for the people that are into what you write. And you, you hope to find somebody that wants to read all your books because they like the way you approach a subject or they know how you'll do it. You don't write it for everybody. If you do, you're yeah. not being true to yourself. You, there's, there can't be any passion. The book has got to be what you're passionate about. Yeah, I always write from my heart or I don't write. Yeah, and there'll be people that feel the same way or want to know more about that, have a conversation with you. I'll tell you, nothing lights me up like somebody somebody calling me right after they read my book or, or I get a text, oh, my God, the ending, or they'll just say anything like that. And that, that just lights me up that I, I got somebody – yeah. It's funny yeah. because somebody's favorite book could be somebody else's least favorite book. Oh, I, I, yeah. I just couldn't get that book. And then somebody else would go, oh, my God, you, you yeah. got me. Yeah, yeah. Right so your where, where, do you, where do you get your ideas? Uh, I put myself just in comfortable positions sometimes, and something will knock me on the side of the head. Or I'm out in, in public, and, and you see something uncomfortable. You see you know, everything that, that goes into a book is a memory. It's a twisted memory, and maybe just the way I want to see it, but uh, again, I'm, I'm talking about uh, the newest book, um, The Wrong Side of the Glass. I, I was at a public supermarket, and, and I was able to see an abusive husband you know, telling his wife to get out of the car, and when she wouldn't get out of the car, he's pulling her by her clothes and then by her hair and throwing her down on the ground saying, you could walk home. And uh, so those different memories make their way in make your way into the book and you, you see different characters that you just have to have in your book. You know, the guy who's talking to you and, and every time, you know, he's always, it's my brother-in-law, he's talking, he's, he's got an injured shoulder and, uh, you know, you know that other person that, that, that blinks too much and, and you just see characters everywhere and, and I'm not going to kid you, I mix them together to make them more interesting. You know, hey, let's have a shoulder roll and an eye wink, you know, for that crazy guy. And <laughs> we've all seen those people that get the big vein when they get very angry and I think that's my favorite part, just creating, creating characters that are that are unforgettable. I want you to close my books and and think those people are real. And I, on this last one, the wrong side of the glass, boy, I've got a friend. In fact, my friend is Bobby from Bobby's Cabin. What a character he is! Oh, I think you guys are going to love this book. But he read the wrong side of the glass, and he just can't stop talking about it. You know, is Gwen going to be there this weekend? And she's not even a real person except maybe him and to me, because by the time I'm done with the book, it's a, it's a character that is really a part of me. I worry about him. I hope they make the right decision. Oh, my yeah. gosh, I can't believe she said that, you know. And it's really me, but, uh, you know, they're just... Yeah, they're like, like in each book, are you one of your characters? I mean, I know who you'd have to be in the Traveler's Bestseller, easy. But yeah. 
are you one of the characters kind of you know then you get to kind of say things maybe you wouldn't say in real life or yes i think it's a it's a it's an avenue to speak out and to, to say what you may maybe have inside that you you don't say as yourself you know how the people say oh i'm asking for a friend you know so yeah there is a lot of truth to that gosh there's reckless ambition for sure yeah in your dreams and then uh, you know when i'm gone I, what i didn't realize about that one that one's about the, the afterlife and i'm I just was talking to a friend who I recommended it to. She lost her husband not too long ago. And it's about you know, a husband who was passed on, he, you know, and she wasn't ready for him to pass on. And, uh, and he's trying to come back and communicate with her. And, he, you know, Maria, Maria, but she, you know, she's stuck there doodling on her little piece of paper. She's kind of lost in her world. Where do I go? And he realizes his eight-year-old boxer can, can hear her, hear him. And, girl, baby, you know, Murphy, can you hear me? And he's trying to talk to the dog. And he passes out, and he comes to, and he's, he's the dog with his human mind. Now he's really trying to, Maria, but instead of getting her attention, he's more like a whiny dog. You know, I know, Murphy, I'm some too. Go away, please, go away. And, and uh, I forget where I was going with that whole story, but you just, just get yeah. lost in these books, and they take on characters. And had so much fun with that one as well. Yeah, well, I think you too, well, I, you know, on the other side of the glass, that one, that book came out when I was taking care of my husband. My husband was in his final weeks of life. Mm -hmm. And he just wanted me to sit next to him and not talk. But I'm not, neither of my good traits. But <laughs> I also loved to read and that was okay. And I remember seeing, oh my God, it's out. You know, and it was such an escape for me at that time. You know, I, I needed to be somewhere else. It was a very heavy duty situation. And there's so many twists in that book. It's kind of like, oh that, my goodness, you know. That's probably my darkest book. I, I worry, I always like to lead out with the Traveler's bestseller because I, I get the, the best comment. Everybody, oh, I just love that book. But now, the, the other one, I get some people, my neighbor loved my first book. This one she read and said, I'm afraid to be your neighbor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not what I wanted. But, uh, but it's, a, it's one of those, you know, every now and then you really risk it. In your dreams, I, I got pretty explicit on that one also. I, I let out a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, the, the stuff that you usually keep hidden. And uh, I find that those books seem to, be, seem to be the ones that do the best. The Traveler's Bestseller, Way at the End, The, the Time in Heaven, you know, where, where there were some real honest conversations. And yeah. you, you like to call them your character, but I know that people say, I know more about you now. I know more about yeah. you. Yeah, because yeah. well, you are in it. Now, yeah. when you write a book with multiple characters, do you develop each character one one at a time or just kind of like what? Because yeah, none I, of my writing is like that. Yeah, I do them one at a time, but, but what I've found works best for me is once I have that story going, I go onto the Internet and I try and find that person. And I actually get a picture of them. So I'll go on, and if there's, you know, Officer Labant, I'm looking up till I find the officer that I, big build, Cuban descent, you know, bald head, I find that person. And not only do I find them, but when I'm getting ready to do the audible, I send that picture to the person who does his voice, along with a clip from a video of, say, somebody who is online, maybe a character from, that we know well on TV. So it'll be similar similar to their voice and his picture. Now he has somebody to relate to. Every time he switches voices, he can look up at my little list of, of all the different yeah. characters. One is called Thin, Lanky, Strong Character, and, and he adapts a voice to, to my vision. And uh, So, yeah, I, I actually... But, but I like, how, do you, I find them. How, do you, how do you find a picture of Gwen? Gwen? Yeah. Redhead. I start with a, with a well, you know, fit redhead. And... Uh, and and you start from there, and I just and I spend a lot of time looking for them, and I go, ah, that's her, that's her. And when I find someone, Gwen, that that I think's beautiful, that scares me, you know, I just get that, you know, that there's a look in their eye, or or just something about them, an attitude, and you just say, that's her. And and Gwen, for anybody who doesn't know, Gwen is a very scary character that has uh, intermittent explosive disorder so you know during you know where you and i will have pressure and maybe some people some people cry some will yell real loud some shut down gwen is unpredictable and uh a very interesting character she's married to a very understanding husband who, who tries to just 
go along for the for the ride, but she's a little too much. I'm not yeah. going to tell you yeah. more than that, but uh, yeah. she's a wild character. I never character. knew that. That's it's interesting. Scary. I like that because, I, you know, my book, A Night in God Bless, is about me and my mom. My book, Care, mm -hmm. Cognitive Caregivers, is about caregiving. But I have this book I've been in my mind writing for years, you know, and it starts out like there's, like there's two twin sisters entangled in fishnet dead on Clearwater Beach. Or, you know, it's whatever. Or different and that's things. That's how you start a book. What? People, want to, people so much want to start a book at the beginning. I love starting in the middle. Like, just like you said, two people found on a beach and entangled in a net. Boom. And then people are going, how did that happen? And then you develop the story. So you know, it's not a once upon a time. I, my stories aren't once upon a time. They start with two sisters in a yeah. fish net. Yeah. Well, then, I then, like you know, that. then I think because I've always thought in my mind what they look like. And I never knew how to connect that. So now I could go do a Google search and say pretty young beach babe or something or, or whatever. I tell you, it's worked for me real well and it's really helped the person who, you know, the Audible, or I'll send it to the, the person who read my book. And, and you know, in the early stages, you know, before it's actually published, and a lot of times they'll say, I, I, don't, I don't see that person, or I wish you didn't send me that. I, I had a different vision. And, and that's helpful. Yeah. 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 Well, and then how do you pick names? That's a tough one. You know, I just um, I start looking up male names or German names, or it depends what your character is, and I just go until I find one. And, and for a while, I was doing something that, that, that not many people know. Like, say, I, you know, a lot of times you're reading somebody's book, and you and you and there's so many names. You're waiting, now, who was that again? And who was that oh, yeah. again? And who was that? Well, well I scramble letters up word and sometimes unscrambled will say what they are who they do like there's a waitress in the in the in, the, in which one is it uh, the wrong side of the glass and her name is Tressa waitress Tressa so there's just little things I do to help people to to quickly associate the character with with what I've told them all about that person because if you tell them about a, a, a character yet six chapters later later that one comes in again you get wait a minute who was she again yeah. So I yeah. try and do things that um, that will easily remind you of who that character is. Now, do um, you pick a locale from the beginning? Like this book is in Florida or Pennsylvania or, or about Bobby's Cabin. Where's Bobby's Cabin? North Carolina, the mountains of North Carolina. And there really that is a cabin about, in North Carolina, right? Yeah, that, that book's a little... little too real. That's a very real one. That's a book about friends that go on vacation together at, at Bobby's cabin. It's a, it's a place that they go to, and, and on, on one of these days, we see a different Bobby, and, uh, and it's not a good one. There's a character we didn't realize inside of him, and it's a weekend that, that goes wrong, and it's about what happens when you're when you're way up a mountain in a log cabin, nobody else around, when things don't go right. Things go wrong, and they just keep getting worse. And worse, and uh, true to form, it's an interesting book. And I'm gonna get you at the end anyway. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you at the end, and I'm gonna get you anyway. But uh, I'm really pleased with it. I tell you, what you when I write a book, Go ahead. I want, I, I want to have a great storyline. I want to have unforgettable characters, and at the end, I want you to go, "Son of a bitch, got me again." Close yeah. that book, and I want you to be thinking about that. I want you to be reliving it. When you sleep, yeah, and then you, and you want to be and you want to be starving for the next book, right? I mean, that's the dream. You know, that, the dream you know, is that I, you guys start to like them. And yeah, when you have all. a favorite author, and then they write a book, and you read the book, and you're like, okay, when's the next one? Right, right. So I'm right. having fun with it, and and uh, I'm really hoping to be successful enough that I could do it for the rest of my life, and and uh, and get a whole lot of other people who who are planning to write a book, started to write a book. I finished it. I don't know what to do with it. I want to help you. I want to help you feel the same feeling, uh, something you could do into your later years and uh, and help other people who can relate to it. So It's fun. Call, yeah. It's important to read. I think so, too. And and it's important, me, it's to, important to write. Yeah. yeah. Because, like I said, we all have a story, and it doesn't have to be a big deal. It could be just a story about your family. You know, an actual right. story. You know, I remember right. my grandma, and we did this, and we did that. It's good to have those conversations. A story about your mom or your dad, something you taught me, Linda. 
you asked when my parents were getting way up there in, the, in age, you said, interview them. Ask them questions you've never asked them because kids so often think their parents are, are born at age 50 with, with children, a mortgage, you know, and responsibility. And in reality, they were kids just like us, dreams unfulfilled, and they, they took a break on everything to make sure there's food on the table for us. And, and, and we barely even take the time to say, what were you like as a kid? And what are your fears? What were your dreams? You know, what, did you, what did you accomplish you're so proud of? What did you never accomplish? And uh, I learned so much about my dad and encouraged him that he ended up writing. And when he saw that I wrote a book, he ended up writing about all about his time in World War II and, oh, yeah? and college days. He left us behind a book about him, which was so cool. Quite good. Very accomplished man. 98 years to, to do his accomplishment, but he's done everything from... He's, yeah. he's done it all. He's a, what's such a great man. My my granddaughter found a, a picture of me recently, and I have like a go go boots on, maybe kind yeah. of like a short skirt. And she's yeah. like, "No way, Grandma! You were one of them." <laughs> right. You weren't born at age fifty. Yeah. Right. yeah. You were a little hot, Grandma. Really? <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. I'm so glad I made it through life. <laughs> I know, and, you, and there's no guarantees. I tell you, I worry with every book that I write that I'm going to die before I finish. I don't know what that's about. But, you know, I, 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 that's part of the reason why I have this tendency to want to rush it. And thank God Jennifer is so understanding about my writing. I'll wake up four in the morning and go start to write, and she'll wake up, and, you know, Rick's gone again. But uh, she encourages me to slow down, take your time. But I have this inner fear, and uh, if, I'm, if I'm three quarters of the way through, Linda, I'm going to ask you to, Finish my book and get it published on any one of them, okay? All right. Somebody's yeah. got to finish it. Got to get it finished. Got to put it out. I also find 4 a.m., 5 a.m. is a good time to write. Because most people, when you say that to them, they're like, what are you nuts? But if you are a morning person, um, mm -hmm. it's so quiet then. Yeah. Because the phones aren't ringing. There's no really, there's only like, I would go outside to my, like my, my porch. And it's just nature sound. You know, and then it starts getting lighted. You start hearing the birds, and I, it's mm -hmm. it's very, I think, um, conducive to writing. Right. Tell you when I'm writing a book, if there's, a, I think you'll notice I do a lot of railroads sometimes get into more than one of my books, and there's, there's a railroad right across the way here, so I get to hear the train twice a day coming by. And if I'm writing about like the heaven scene in the uh, in the Travelers, I I actually went to heaven. No, no, I went to the beach though. I went to the beach early in the morning to, you know, before the sun, and you know that you take all your beautiful photos every morning. But, boy, those are the times where you try to use all your senses. You know, what, is it, what does it smell like when, when in yeah. first thing in the morning, the, the, you know, the beach coming in? What's it like when the wave comes in? Is it just one wave? No, there's, there's 75 different waves hitting at different places, all in different, you know, effervescent stage. You know, just beautiful to watch. And then the sun rises and just all that stuff. You, you have to live it. And then write about it, just patiently try and remember that there's not just one, there's not just visual. you got to bring them into the, in there with the sense of smell. And Well, I think we should be like, using those senses, those senses all the time, and we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we just don't. Uh, enough people don't go out and look at the beautiful sunrise and look at the beautiful flowers and smell the ocean and smell the cut grass. Or, I mean, even if you're not going to write a book, you should be doing that. Right. I mean, listen to all the different sounds that are out there that you just take for granted. The rustling of the tree, you, you know, when it's starting, when the wind blows, the dry leaves blowing across the deck. There's all the different little things, the birds that you've tuned out. The, the yeah. people cutting the grass down the way. and Yeah. Anyway, you you know, when I, when I take my good morning pictures, I remember taking some pictures in Manhattan one day, and it was of a whole bunch of tulips, because we don't get a lot of tulips here. And um, I went upstairs, my stepmother lives on the 15th floor. I'm showing her the pictures of the tulips and her friend comes over and she goes, Linda, show her the tulips. And I show the woman and she says, where are they? Mm -hmm. On the street, you just walk down. <laughs> they didn't just bloom yeah. for me. You know? yeah, right. <clears throat> but I, I, that makes my heart feel a little sad because we're, uh, gets back to what you focus on. Uh, not, I, I hate the news and I'd rather look at the flowers. Let me put it that way. And you sure do. Every morning, Linda sends out photos on Facebook that just remind you that beauty is everywhere. I don't care if it's a close-up of a flower or, or a beautiful scene on the beach, but uh, 
you find even if it's a crummy day. Started. Yeah. But some days it's you know yesterday my hot water heater went. Oh, but I said no. <laughs> it's we'll rise something. above this. <laughs> uh, the, other, the other morning, Jenna woke up and she said it rained all night and hard. Of course, I had a leak on the on the side of the house. It wasn't really raining, so there's always something. Yeah. But it was a, you know, she enjoyed a beautiful night of rain. It was raining so hard on the house. No one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All fixed. Do you have what any else, last? Linda? Would you have any last words for us today? Is it time already? Just about. Yeah. If there is a book inside of you, write it. And then, the internet is such a, a great source for finding out things. And in the beginning, you're going to find out that uh, there's there's people that just like right now, you get these texts that say, "Oh, your Amazon package has been has not been delivered. Press here and." We'll make it all better, and it's a scam. There's a lot of that in the beginning, too. There are people that will pretend that they really think your book is wonderful, and you ask them a question about it, they haven't really even read it, but they you know, they want you to, to use yeah. them for something. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of baloney out there, and just it takes time to get to know, you know what, what's a real call and what isn't, and who to trust and who not to. And, uh, and yeah. I'd love to be a source for you. Anybody who's thinking about writing a book, look me up. You know, come on to my author page and uh, get to know me a little bit better. I will be honored to talk to you. And and, and you know what, Rick? Maybe somewhere down the road you and I will do like a little write your book workshop or something. Deal. Love to. Let's think about Love that. To. We could do it via Zoom, maybe do like three weeks in a row or something. But we'll talk about it. Perfect. Okay. All right. So you can see it's that author. Oh, he's, did you spell the author wrong? I did. Yeah. A fat thumb. Sorry. Oh, you didn't have your editor here Let's today. See, that's the point. An editor is so important. Oh, right, that's an honor the whole time. So you don't even notice it. You don't notice it when you do it yourself. No. See, and there's no. your first lesson in editing. Yes. No charge. All right, everybody. AuthorRickandCorvia.com. <laughs> we'll see you next Tuesday with some more great news. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And have a delicious day. Love you Bye, guys. Bye, Bye.